Hello everyone, I've got an interesting video for you today. This video actually pertains to my day job, which I haven't really um, talked about much or really covered in any of my videos. But in short, we have this part that we buy. It is a DIN rail clip, and we got a shipment of about a thousand of these, and they had the wrong hole size. So I'm going to show you how I made this really simple, inexpensive jig to be able to drill these out, which actually saved us quite a bit of time. So let me first start by giving you a little bit more backstory to the problem so that you can see the solution a little bit better. These are these little DIN clips that we get. Um, we get these from a manufacturer overseas for, you know, a couple bucks, something like that. And they just kind of clip onto a DIN rail like that. Our product has this mounting pattern on the bottom of it so that we can use that to mount our product to a DIN rail like that. Uh, the company I work for is eGage Systems. It is a company that makes an energy monitor, so this is very useful to have a DIN mount option. In addition, um, previously to all this, I designed this simple little L bracket so that you can put the um, DIN clip on like that, then attach it, and now you can attach your e-gauge energy monitor at a right angle. Now, we made a bunch of these. I think we made somewhere around a 1,000 of these, and these have the little um, perm nuts. They're um, press-fit nuts that go in here, and it is a 632 hole pattern. So we already have these. We just got a new shipment of these in, and instead of having a 632 through hole, it was something like a 440 through hole, so a number six screw wouldn't go through these. So that was okay in that it mounts to the bottom of the product, but it doesn't mount onto the L brackets that we already had. So we are at a crossroads. We could either throw out all of these DIN clips and order a new batch of them. That would waste us some money. Or we could throw out all of these and order these with a new nut size. That would also be um, quite a bit of waste of money. So the simple solution, the obvious solution, is to drill the holes out to the appropriate size. However, you get a thousand of these stupid little things and you're sitting there with a drill press. It's not a hard job, but it's really not a fun job. We have a limited amount of production um, capacity, let's say. So if I take my production team and put them on this, they are doing this, which is a really mindless, stupid task, versus doing um, the other tasks like um, bootstrapping the units, um, programming them, QAing them, all that stuff, which I would much rather them be doing. So I wanted to come up with a very simple way of basically just saving us some time so we didn't have to throw anything out. So I came up with this really simple jig that I could load this into the Tormach machine and instead of on average one of these taking I think somewhere around a minute or a minute and 15 because you have to drill it out then flip it over and deburr it, um, we've gotten it down to eh, maybe about like 10 or 15 seconds per and it's really easy to swap these in and out. So essentially for that shipment of a thousand we end up saving ourselves quite a bit of time. It did take me a little bit of time to put this video together and also put this jig together, but it was still only in the realm of a couple hours. So let's go um, show how I made this jig. So the first thing I wanted to mention is the complexity of this project. This is not a complex project. This is not just like some crazy mind blowing thing that is really all that novel or interesting. But what I did want to do with this video is show that I use my machines a lot for my day job. I don't just use them for building combat robots and other stuff like that. I quite you know, frequently use my laser cutter and my Tormach CNC for little work projects like this. And I just wanted the opportunity to show you one of these little projects and show you that having a CNC machine in a business or small production environment can actually be extremely useful. So moving on to the jig. The jig itself is made out of a piece of select pine from Home Depot. I want to say this is a one by four, so it's three and a half by 0.75. If you're not sure how dimensional lumber came up with their dimensions, go online. It's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, it is a one by four piece of pine. It's really cheap. I use this a lot for various jigs. You've probably seen it in some various jig videos that I've done just because it's cheap, it's consistent, and it's easy to find at Home Depot. So I design stuff around that a lot. At the top, I have a piece of acrylic and another piece of acrylic at the bottom. Basically, all I need to do is hold a couple of these plates in so I can drill them precisely and then slide this down, pop them out, put a couple in, 
pop that back in and keep going. So it's a really simple thing. Now I only chose to do two on this jig. I could have easily done three. I probably should have done three. Um, I probably maybe could have even fit four with the travel of my machine. I just chose two for whatever reason. It was just easier, but I could make a linear pattern and go for more. Um, but I did about 200 of these as the test pilot run, and it took me under an hour, so it really works out just fine. These uh, two pieces are laser cut acrylic. You could very easily just make these um, on a 3D printer. You could also make these on the Tormach. You don't really need the laser printer, but, or laser cutter, um, but this was the, much quicker way of doing this because these pieces only took like 10 seconds or so. Basically what I did is I have two recesses. I have two recesses um, right there that match the outline of these DIN clips and I have a couple pockets in there like that. I did these pockets because I could have very easily put these with the features facing up, but I did the pockets so I could put them down just in case I needed to flip them over and um, do any kind of deburring or um, things like that. When we were doing these on the drill press at work, we have a really crappy drill press, and when you drill through, it just explode out the bottom and you have to go back and deburr it. Um, but I actually just kind of tuned everything in the machine to where it gives a nice quick peck and I don't have to deburr it. So this only is one operation step, which is pretty nice but I left those features in and at the bottom this piece of acrylic just really simply slides up and down just to clip them in place and the one on top just kind of overlaps ever so slightly so you just kind of have to slide it in well the right way you have to slide in like that this just clips over top of it and it's not going anywhere so pretty simple this piece was all designed of course in SolidWorks and then once this piece was designed I have a zero zero down here at the bottom I'm using my little label maker a lot to um, indicate this is the um, zero coordinate so zero zero and then the top of it is zero so it makes it really easy to indicate sometimes what I do is actually put a label on the back for the program in my machine, I have a special folder for eGauge system stuff. And then a lot of times I put the CAM name on the back of here. So I remember, oh yeah, it's this program. Um, so that's really all there is to it. Uh, let me do some video of this being made and then I'll show you how it works. I really like using wood for these kind of non-critical projects like this. It's really easy just to bring it over to the table saw, cut the piece down to size, indicated on the mill and then just start cutting. Um, aluminum obviously takes a lot more time and you have to pay a lot more attention to everything, but wood is really nice because it's just so easy and so forgiving and it takes a lot less time. Uh, once I got out of the cam and everything run on this, I say it was only maybe 10 minutes to do all the actual cutting on the jig. And so yeah, it goes pretty quick. So here is what the jig looks like after the initial machining. Um, it's a little bit fuzzy, but I use one of these sponge blocks, which I just set down. I use one of these little sponge blocks to just kind of go over the top like that. And it takes these little hairs right off of it. So you can see just a little bit of work and we can get all that nice and cleaned up. So that's looking nice and good. And so the next step is to take our little um, din plate and see if it fits. And that actually looks really nice. It's held up just a little bit on this edge, which is actually totally fine because that's where the little mount will clip it in and it's nice and flush on that rear side. So now it's just time to laser cut the piece that goes in the back and the front. And here are the two finished pieces. I might have to end up modifying this one because this turned out to be just a little bit too thin for me. And of course my neighbor is doing um, chainsaw practices right now. So that's pretty awesome. Um, but yeah, they turned out okay. So I'm gonna take the film off and build these inside the machine. The hole sizes seem to be just fine. This should slide just fine in and out of there. So yeah, let's put it together.
Here is the finished, well, hopefully finished jig. It's hard to see, but there's just a little bit of a lip right there and there that holds the clip underneath. And then this just um, simply slides forward and backwards. So if we take our clips with these features down, rest them inside like that, and one like that, this should slide right over top, and now they are nice and secure. Uh, this could be a little bit tighter, but I can adjust that so it's a little bit tighter right there. And then also I can put some piece of tape or something like that underneath to raise these up a little bit. But really when I'm drilling this, all I care about is it doesn't shift this way. And when the drill comes up, it doesn't pull out. And there's really no way that these can pull up and out. And changing them out is really easy. You just pull that down, flip these up, put a new one in, put a new one in. Ah. <laughs> clip it back and you're good to go. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, but overall works out pretty well. So let's um, drill some holes in these guys and actually test it out for real. So that's really all there is to it. For my rough calculations, doing these by hand on a manual drill press, kind of one by one, and then having to deburr them after every single step, um, I was calculating it takes a little bit over a minute per, and that does seem a little bit long, but keep this in mind. If you're sitting there holding every single one, your hand starts to cramp up after I don't know, about 50 of these, and you really probably should be clamping these down every single time. So, you know, really a minute isn't that long. It does just kind of add up because after about 50 or 100 of these things, it really does start to slow down. So I calculated that roughly you're saving probably in a batch of 1,000, somewhere around 15 hours, which if we factor in, you know, non-skilled labor, if we say like, you know, 10, $15 an hour or something like that, you're never going to justify the cost of a CNC machine. However, lost opportunity cost, what I explained earlier, is having production people working on, you know, this versus something else. There is a lot of lost opportunity cost because they're not working on something more important or more valuable. So having a CNC is a really nice thing to have for instances like this. This alone is not going to justify getting a CNC machine, but having one on hand a million of these little things come up and you know it seems like once a week I'm doing something just like this so it's pretty cool so hopefully that gives you a little bit of insight into how you can use a CNC machine for uh, little odd jobs like this and how I use it for little things like this as always check me out on Facebook for updates to my recent projects and also down below I have a um, link for eGauge system so you can go ahead and check out the products that we carry as well just for grins thanks a lot for watching see you next time